Give thanks to Allah for the moon and the stars. Praise Him all day for what is and what was. Take hold of your iman. Don't give in to shaitan. Oh, you who believe, please give thanks to Allah. Allahu Ghafur, Allahu Rahim, Allahu Yuhibbul Muhsinin, Wa Khaliquna, Wa Raziquna, Wa Huwa Ala Kulli Shayin Qadir. Allah is Ghafur, Allah is Rahim, Allah is the one who loves the Muhsinin. He is our creator, He is our sustainer, and He is the one who has power over all. Give thanks to Allah for the moon and the stars. Before I became a Muslim, I think I was just a... In, for all intents and purposes, I was just a, a normal teenager, I suppose. I, I went out with friends and... Um, just did normal teenage stuff. I think I liked Brit pop. I went to concerts, went to the big day out. You know, I just I went to high school. I was really just a very normal person, and it was it wasn't until I got to university that I um, I decided that I wanted to be Muslim. When I was about 17, I started to question why I believed what I believed. Did I believe what I did just because um, I'd been raised to believe it or because I thought it was true? So I decided that I wanted to look into other religions. I um, actually had as my news resolution that I wanted to look into Judaism and, and that sort of thing. Um, I had no interest at all in becoming Muslim. When I read about what Islam said about itself, I realised it was actually very, um, very different to what I thought. It was actually very peaceful, um, very egalitarian, strong emphasis on uh, equal treatment of women, um, strong stance on social justice. I thought it was very um, intellectual religion, yet it was also very spiritual, and that really appealed to me as well. And so, um, after a couple of years of actually looking into it and taking it seriously, it was when I was 19 that. I realised this is actually something that I, I really believe in. Give thanks to Allah for the moon and the stars. Praise Him all day for what is and what was. Take hold of your iman. Don't give in to shaitan. Oh, you who believe, please give thanks to Allah. My daily life hasn't changed at all, and in other words, it's changed quite profoundly, I think. Um, the main difference would probably be that um, I pray five times a day now. I, you know, I perform the ritualistic prayer five times a day. So, you know, the first prayer is before sunrise, and you know, then they're scattered at throughout the day. So that's changed. Um, but I still feel, you know, and obviously I wear the headscarf now, which I didn't do before I was Muslim. In other ways, you know, I, I don't feel like I've changed a lot. I'm still the same person. You know, I still crack the same stupid jokes, and I still like the same sort of things. And, you know, I've still got a lot of the same cool friends I had before and some cool new friends that I've made since becoming Muslim, some of whom are Muslim and some aren't. I am a Muslim, Islam I be, Islam I be, Allah my Lord, Allah my Lord, He's worth Quran, He's worth Quran, Muhammad Prophet, praise be upon, praise be upon, I am a Muslim. So we live in a society that where women are constantly objectified. How many times do we turn on the TV or drive past a billboard where a, a half-naked woman is being used to sell spaghetti or toothbrushes or carpet or whatever. By wearing the hijab these women are saying, I don't want to be a part of that and I want to be taken more for my mind than, um, than the size of my chest or how long my legs are or what kind of hair I have or anything like that. If God has chosen the women in this society to be the flag bearers for Islam. You know, my husband has a beard, but people can't necessarily tell that he's Muslim, you know. Um, he just really sort of fits in with everybody else. But for me, as soon as someone sees me, they know that I'm Muslim. And so I'm like the flag bearer or the ambassador for Islam. And I find it really interesting that God chose women for that role and not for men. Allahu Ghafur, Allahu Rahim, Allahu Yuhibbul Muhsinin. 
هو خالقنا هو رازقنا وهو على كل شيء I think there's certainly are stereotypes of Muslims you know people will assume that I'm oppressed or that I don't speak English or um, that sort of thing or assume that my husband is a terrorist or whatever. If there is a negative stereotype of Muslims out there, that a lot of that, the blame for that has to fall on the shoulders of Muslims. People aren't going to think the wrong, aren't going to think the wrong things about us if Muslims aren't constantly doing the wrong thing or coming across negatively. Muslims also need to have open minds and uh, participate in open, non-threatening dialogue and welcome non-Muslims into their mosques and, and talk to them about their religion. Um, because as long as uh, there's sort of an us and them mentality, um, things are going to stay the way that they are. It's just a matter of talking to your neighbours or the guy you work next to at work or the, the, the woman that you sit next to in your class and just be normal and friendly and doing that sort of thing can really um, change stereotypes. With him are the keys of the unseen, the treasures that none knoweth but he. He knoweth whatever there is on the earth and in the sea. Not a leaf doth fall but with his knowledge. There is not a grain in the darkness or depths of the earth, nor anything fresh or dry, green or withered, but it is inscribed in a record clear to those who can read.